What in the fuck is a canonical tag and how do I use one? Stay tuned, I'm gonna tell you how. 10 bands, 50 bands, 100 bands. Hey guys, how you doing? Ryan Stewart here with Weberson. Thank you for joining me live from my condo. As you can see, I'm here in my kitchen. I had this beautiful blackboard installed for my girlfriend to write down recipes to cook, but since that never happened, I use it now for my own personal shit and to make videos for you guys. So today we're gonna to be talking about something that's really not sexy at all, canonical tags. We're gonna be talking about what they are and how to use them. And what I've done is I've laid out three of the most common scenarios and exactly how you can use them in those situations. So quickly to run you through this pretty complicated key that I've got here, anything in blue, that means you, that's your site. Anything in red, that's another site. So jumping right on into it the first scenario so i saw a couple questions floating around about this the last week and this happens if you do a lot of writing or if you have a pretty powerful blog so when you publish a piece of content you will get either a bunch of pingbacks or you will check a link indexer a couple days later and you'll see that a lot of little sites have literally ripped verbatim word for word the content on your post now a lot of these sites do it. I know there are a lot of just private blog networks that just syndicate content from, from big sites just to beef up the site and add content, right? It's just a script that you just pull from an RSS feed and it just literally copies and pastes content, right? This isn't bad for your site. You do not have to worry about doing content. If it's something that you're worried about, all you have to do is whenever you publish a new piece of content or a new page on your website, go into your webmaster tools, search console, go to fetch as Google, submit the URL, and it will get indexed immediately. And all that does is it tells Google that this piece of content belongs to your site, to your domain, and anything else on the web is a copy. Now, you can do this. If you have another site, you can actually rip content verbatim. And that's what we're gonna talk about in, in the second scenario. You're allowed to rip content from other sites as long as you use a canonical tag that points back to the original source because that tells Google that you syndicated that content, this is the original source, I'm just using it for my own personal gain. So actually, I've used this before because I do a lot of guest blogging for a lot of big sites and I write really, really good content that I would like to share with my own personal audience. Now, all I have to do is literally copy and paste my own blog and then use a canonical tag that points back to the original source. And that's really easy to do if you use WordPress because there's actually in pretty much every SEO plugin, you just scroll down on your post page and you, there's a space for cross domain canonical tags. And all you do is you put in the URL of the original piece of content, you dump it in here, and click publish and it puts a little piece of HTML on your page that when Google crawls your page it says hey look at this content is syndicated from this URL no harm no foul right there's no pain to penalties triggered and that's actually how press releases are supposed to work right when a site like Huffington Post and Forbes and Inc when they pick up a press release they're supposed to point it back to the original source with a canonical tag that tells Google that when people are searching for that press release the original press release should rank now that rarely happens because those sites are big pieces of shit and they don't really care, but that's beside the point. Now, the third scenario is actually internally within your own site. And we actually use this on our own site because when you have two pieces of content or two pages on your site or multiple pages on your site that are very, very similar, you can actually use a canonical tag to tell Google which one is the authority within your site. Because, and this is where people get tripped up with Panda penalties because they have you know, two pages on their site all about SEO services, they might not be verbatim the same, but when Google is ranking one of those pages, how do they know which one is which? Because they're the same thing. They can't, so they don't rank either of them. So this actually happened with us because we, you know, we believe in ranking inner pages, not home pages, right? So we have pages set up for SEO services, web design services, and our goal was to rank each of these pages for that keyword. What ended up happening was our home page ended up ranking for the main SEO keyword. So Instead of trying to fight it and you know ask people to change links and stuff like that, what we did, we took a canonical tag from our SEO services page and pointed it right at the home page. And that told Google that when people are searching for SEO services, especially our branded SEO services, use the home page. Don't even forget, don't even bother with the service page. Now this page is still indexed, but it's just not going to rank for that stuff because we told Google that this page is the authority when it comes to SEO. So it's very valuable if you have similar pieces of content on your site to use canonical tags internally, especially if you're updating a piece of content that's like three or four years old and you write a new page, just use a canonical tag. Don't bother deleting it, canonicalize it to the new page that tells Google that this is a new authority on our site. So that's all I got for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm gonna be doing a lot of these videos based on questions that you guys ask. So simply use the hashtag 
ask Ryan on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram. I'll take the question. I'll do one of these videos just for you and publish it. Thanks for joining me, guys. Have a great day.